I would say in the interest of time, we can start maybe, um, at least with an introduction. I don't know, Richard, if you suggest we wait a few more minutes. No, Eleanor, I think that's a great idea. We've got a, okay. a nice quorum here. So let's go and I'm sure people can join and, and pick up as we go along. Yeah, perfect. So hi everyone again. Thanks for joining uh, our meeting. Um, so before we dive in, as I said, into other, uh, into a more um, presentation from my colleague, Hannah and Ibrahim, who, which I will introduce later on, I just want to give you a bit of an overview of the session. Uh, next slide, please, Richard. Okay. So for those who have not been members or not been in contact with this task force, I'll just do a brief introduction of the task force and then move into how we can basically, you can basically access the tool. I'm not sure we'll have the time to do a live demonstration, which will only take a few seconds anyway, but I will really want to leave the main part of this meeting to the presentation of Hannah and Ibrahim. And so then we, you can have also some question and answer for their presentation and then wrapping up. Next slide, please. So as I said in the pitch, uh, basically the main role of the task force has been to basically document evidence, like strengthen the evidence and working toward, towards developing and disseminate what exists already in terms of tools and guidance to like um, link cash with child protection outcomes. And we have done that over the past year in different forms and in different ways through gathering um, resources from different people sent by us or that we found online um, through like hosting webinars. We have hosted so far three webinars and we have two more coming up from different NGOs who are actually doing great work in child protection and cash programming and they wanted to share their tools and their experiences, challenges, lessons learned. Um, and then we've also been engaging task force members and also me and myself and Mirette, the other co-lead of this task force, into like adjusting and developing in new tools, but also commenting on tools such as the next um, presentation, but also like, for example, we have been participating in the child, in the um, child protection and social protection guidance that has just been released recently by the Alliance. Next slide, please. So just for you to let you know, we are basically building on a kind of a library like of the Alliance, it's already there, but we have recently just populated it by, with a lot of resources on cash and child protection. So if you go on the Alliance website and then on the main toolbar, you have learning, you can access resources or webinars where you will see in a drop down menu that there is cash transfer or cash programming. I will post later on the link into the chat just so that we can move quickly into the presentation of Hannah and Ibrahim. Um, but basically we keep uh, populating that library. So please, if you have any tools or anything that you don't see there, but you think will benefit other actors, please do feel free to send an email and we'll share what our email emails later um, to like, you know, post it online and be accessible to other members. Uh, just a reminder that as Joan said, we'll have a task force meeting at two hours where we will discuss more in depth, like the, the plans for the future for the next year and what we have been doing so far in the ne next week on Thursday the 15th. So again, if you would like to participate to that, it's open to everyone. Please do send us an email at the end of this session and we'll send you the calendar invite uh, with the Zoom link to access. Uh, next slide, please. So I'm here then leaving the floor to Hannah and Ibrahim. I just want to introduce them before I leave, uh, I leave them to speak more. So Hannah is an independent consultant um, that has been working on this new toolkit commissioned by um, the Child Protection Alliance with Save the Children. Um, and she has been working on this cash and voucher assistance and child protection uh, m and toolkit. 
Um, Ibrahim is the other presenter of this. Um, Ibrahim is a protection program manager for Shafak. Shafak is a Syrian NGO based in Turkey, but working in Northwest Syria. Uh, and he has been piloting um, with this organization has been part of the piloting of these tools. So we'll have Hannah explaining a bit the toolkit, then Ibrahim explaining like the the experience in the pilot process. And then if we have time, we'll have time for a few questions um, on where you can ask either me or Hannah and Ibrahim for their uh, uh, question that you might have. So Hannah, I'm handing over to you so that you can have time to present this. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, introduction, Eleonora. Um, so I'll just um, present the toolkit as a whole, and then, as Eleonora said, we'll hand over to Abraham so he can just uh, describe how they pilot tested the toolkit um, in in um, northern Syria. Um, so this is the cash and voucher assistance and child protection monitoring and evaluation toolkit. If we can go to the next slide, please, Richard. Um, just to give you a brief outline of what we'll talk about. So I'll briefly describe the background to the toolkit. Um, I'll explain the three primary components of the toolkit. I'll hand over to Ibrahim for him to describe the work that Shafak did. And then I'll explain the next steps for how we're going to finalize the toolkit and the other tools that we're going to produce alongside the, the current existing three, three tools, three components. Next slide, slide please. So background to the toolkit. Uh, next slide, please. So the aim of the toolkit is to develop um, a set of tools for use in cash and voucher assistance interventions. So some of the tools are for child protection um, programs that are using cash and voucher assistance, and some are for all sector actors. Um, and they will help us to identify child protection risks, uh, help to ident uh, identify ways to mitigate those, and then monitor child protection outcomes. So that's for programs also that are not intentionally delivering child protection outcomes, but um, are for other sectors as well. And the process we've gone through, so this started um, back in sort of uh, October, November last year. Um, I did a literature review and then I drafted the initial tools based on that. Um, then a reference group uh, reviewed those tools and gave feedback and then I revised them and then we sent them out for pilot testing. Um, the pilot testing process has had to change significantly. So initially we'd intended for me to go to one setting and then for there to be use of the tools with affected populations in a number of other locations. Unfortunately, because of COVID, I wasn't able to go on site anywhere. Um, and the only place in which we've actually been able to speak to affected populations and use the tools has been in Northern Syria. Uh, underway is work to do the same process in um, Colombia, Somalia and Cambodia. So we will have data coming from those locations at a later date. And uh, meanwhile, what we did get was feedback from a number of country offices on how they would revise the tools and sort of they, they had discussions with their national staff in country to, to give feedback so we can edit and make it sort of more adaptable on a global level. Next slide, please, Richard. So the three main components of the toolkit is a tool one is a focus group discussion guide. Tool two is a survey tool for use by all sector actors. Tool three is a survey tool for use in child protection case management specifically. So when cash and voucher assistance is part of your case management process. Next slide, please. So I'll go and describe each of those tools in turn. So the first tool, the focus group discussion tool, um, it can be used as an FGD or a key informant interview tool. It uses story. So there's a story at the beginning, you choose which story you'd want to use in that context or you develop your own. And then you discuss a set of questions to elicit hypothetical responses to what are the child protection risks that may happen, the way you would mitigate those risks in that scenario and what positive outcomes might happen for children. It's for use by child protection, cash and all other sector actors. Um, but whoever is using it, you know, if it's a wash, a shelter, food security, livelihood staff member, they would need support from a child protection person to adapt the tool. It's for use by program managers or 
you know, technical heads of, of team um, for them to adapt for use by the enumerators. So they would have to contextualize the tool. It's for use with adult or caregiver respondents. Um, and it's before cash and voucher assistance has started. So this is before you implement your cash and voucher assistance program. Um, next slide, please. It will help to, as I say, identify potential risks, identify actions to mitigate those risks, and to help you make decisions about how you design your program before you start implementing your cash and voucher assistance program. Next slide, please, Richard. Um, the second tool is a survey tool, and that's for use by all sector actors. It can be adapted in the same way to a key informant interview tool. Um, it can be used uh, whenever you're using cash and voucher assistance across any sector. Um, it's for use with adults, so the respondents would be adults, um, and it's after uh, cash and voucher assistance is started. We don't want to prescribe exactly when that would depend on the duration of your cash and voucher assistance, the risks that are present in your location uh, and other situations specific to your context. Um, but it would be used at intervals throughout the life of your cash and voucher assistance and could also be your end line and your post, uh, your follow up uh, evaluation. Next slide, please. So similarly, it will help you determine, um, but it, because it's real time data, it would help you determine if cash and voucher has, assistance has already contributed to protection outcomes. It will inform adaptations of cash and voucher assistance to improve your outcomes for children. So you should be able to adjust your programming as you're um, implementing. It will identify risks to children and strategies, mitigation strategies that are specific to the context. Uh, and it will monitor how effective your current risk mitigation mechanisms are. Um, so this will help us to build up the evidence we need to, to show that CVA can have a positive impact on, on child protection and help us understand better uh, what those risks are that we, the data we don't really have at the moment. Next slide, please. So tool three, again, is a survey or KAI tool, but this is for purely for use by caseworkers uh, who are implementing case management as part of their child protection program. So this is for use with the, the respondents would be adult caregivers who are receiving case management support um, as part of a case management program. And one component of their case management support is CVA. Um, it happens after cash assistance has started and at intervals through the life of the cash and voucher assistance similarly. So you have this real time feedback so you can adjust your programs. Can we have the next slide please? It will help us to determine if CVA is contributing to child protection outcomes and well-being. It will help inform adaptations of CVA to improve the outcomes for children, identify risks that CVA may pose to children, and identify strategies for mitigating their risks. Um, it will help make decisions on mitigating the risks as they occur and monitor the effectiveness of your risk mitigation mechanisms. Next slide, please. So just to be clear on the order, the, the focus group discussion tool, the tool one would come before you implement any CVA. And then you can, depending on what program it is you're delivering, have tool two, which is for all sector actors, or you would use tool three, um, which is specifically for child protection case management. Um, so they would come after you were implementing. Next slide, please. So I will hand over to Ibrahim to describe how they adapted and used the tools. Um, in, in Northern Syria. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Elenira and Hannah. Is my voice clear? Okay. So I, it's my pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, I am Brahim Jawish, the Protection Program Manager in Shafak, as Elenira introduced previously. Um, we work in Northwest North, uh, West Syria from Turkey. We are based in Turkey, but we support North West Syria. Um, actually, from the beginning, Shafak was very interested to be part of this piloting initiative because we have um, already implemented a similar project, cash and voucher assistance for child protection purposes. But it, it was in a smaller scale um, because in our context, cash and child protection is not like super familiar, but inshallah, I and mean, we'll see that growing in the future. Um, the project that we implemented, it was like supported by Save the Children. 
um, and the children and the, the child protection cases were supported by uh, cash and emergency department in Shafak. Um, and now I will give you an overview about our experiences in piloting the cash and voucher assistance tool in Northwest Syria. Uh, if we go to next slide, please. Yes, as you can see here, Shafak has divided the work into five phases, starting from the adap adaptation, which is like the most, the first and most import important phase, um, and included the following. After we received the tools, our technical team here in the HQ office went through the content and reviewed the, the instructions. After that, we translated the document into Arabic because we received it originally in, in English and the local language is Arabic inside Syria. So we translate it into Arabic and we set up a, a meeting with our field team, mainly the case workers who were in, in, in direct contact with the cases to give, the, to, gi to give us their feedback, to enrich our perspective and help us to revise the tool again and ensure that everything will be working in a smooth manner. Based on their inputs, from the field team, based on the inputs from the, the field team, the technical staff went through the questions again, and we rephrased some of the questions, and also we deleted some of them. Um, of course, I am here talking about minor adjustments that have not changed the main purpose of the tools. By the way, we followed the instructions related to the con contextualization process, which are available in each tool. So if you go to each tool, you can, you can find a section about contextualization and how to go and contextualize the tools and the questions. Uh, then we move to section um, to phase two, which is like selection and training of enumerators. Um, we selected the case workers who have the experience from the case management team and have been in close contact with the children and their families. And also they were involved in the, in the cash distribution process. We have conducted a workshop with them to train, to train them on the tool in the final version of the questions, the Arabic version, and to introduce the aim of the tool, to teach them how to introduce the aim of the tool to the participants to manage the expectation from the beginning. And in order to respond like properly to any questions come out from the participants. After that, we move to phase number three, which is like selection of participants. As I mentioned, the program was like the project that we implemented was on a smaller scale. So, um, and also in light of COVID-19, so there was like some restriction in like reaching out to the beneficiary and uh, to the families and the cases, but we were able like to contact some of them and we arranged um, the, the meeting with them. So the participants were mainly adults who received uh, the cash and voucher assistance or like someone from their families who got benefited from this project. Um, and also in each tool, so as, as Hannah presented, you can see the targeted audience. So based on that, we work based on that. After we selected the participants, we started to conduct the surveys after we agreed with them on the time and the, the, the place. And in total, we conducted 16 individual interviews and two focus group discussions. So we piloted the three of the tools, three of them, were piloted by Shafak. Um, actually here we preferred one-on-one -on -one interviews to the fact that most of the people did they have issue with access to internet. And some of them don't have like um, electronic devices. That's why we prefer to do that face-to-face. Uh, -face. And also we were aiming to make sure that they clearly understand the questions and the aim of the tool. And of course, in light of COVID-19 pandemic, all of the safety measures were followed to ensure the safety of the participants and our team. After we consulted with the participants, the interviews took place either in their households or in our facilities. We have child-friendly space, we are running child-friendly spaces and protection centers. Based what, on what they prefer, we, we started to conduct the, the interviews 
um, taking into account the privacy, accessibility, and safety factors, as you can see in the in the in the tools. Um, we collected the data on papers because, like in our context, like any using um, electronic devices could be could put us and um, our beneficiary or particip participant at risk. So we, we used papers. After that, after we collected all the information, we started the, we moved to phase number five, which is analyzing the data. Um, as a protection team, technical team, and meal team, we um, inserted all, uploaded all the data to Kobo link, like to be more easy for analyzing. Afterward, the meal team has finished the analysis for the first two tools which is like uh, individual uh, surveys. And if you allow me here, I, I can share with you some of the findings related to, related to the benefits and risks from implementing the cash and voucher assistant pro programming. Um, also like, uh, as I mentioned, it was only like 16 interviews, but we could like take some findings from them. So the benefits that the most common benefits that they mentioned here increase in the well-being of the children by empowering, empowering their families. And the cash and voucher assistance like supported them to mitigate the child protection related concerns, such as early married child labor and unaccompanied and separated cases. And we have some success stories. Yeah, after, we, after we supported them with, with, uh, with cash support, they came back to us and like informing us like they removed their children, their children from child labor or like they changed their, change their mind about like early marriage. Um, and also another benefit is provide a dignified method for the beneficiaries to choose what they need. So once we like provide them with, with, with cash, they have their own choice, like what to, how to spend, what to buy, like in um, like to, to benefit them and their children. And also another, the last one that they mentioned is supporting the local market. So once we provide cash, that will like also reflect it or on the, on the local market. Uh, in the other side, the risk that they mentioned. So um, if we don't like engage the community very well in designing the program, the cash and, vo and voucher assistance program, that may create tension between different groups who might not be included in the program. So we need to be clear from the beginning, like set clear uh, vulnerability and eligibility criteria and engage community as much as, as much as we can. Also, they mentioned about the tension could arise between the family members themselves if the cash and voucher was not delivered to the right person in the family. So we need to assess that, that before we start um, the distribution. Also, they mentioned in some cases that caregivers may misuse the cash and voucher. So we need like to follow up and monitor it the, after we distribute also. Um, and last thing that mentioned, unplanned closure may create, inst may create instability for the families who are benefiting from the program. So once we leave or like end the cash programming, we need like to think what will happen next. Uh, finally, I would like to share some of the main challenges lesson learned we have faced during piloting the, the tools. Um, I think we, um, the time was not enough to complete the um, whole process yeah, and we need more time because it's new tools. It needs a lot of revision adaptation to the context and also translation because also it, it took time. Um, so the surveys, were the surveys were applied on a small sample. So what we got the feedback from our meal team of like, if we, we need a larger sample to ensure getting accurate results that can be used to inform cash and voucher assistance program designing. Um, lastly, COVID-19 like somehow affected the, um, the process because we're not able to reach all the, the targeted beneficiaries. And for the focus group discussion, it was like very limited uh, participant in the, in the session. That's all from my side. Over to you, Eleonora. And thanks a lot for you. Thank you. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please, and then I'll um, sum up. No, that's fine. You can skip. Yeah, so next steps. Great. Thank you. 
Uh, so just to summarize what's uh, coming next, um, as Ibrahim mentioned, uh, they've already done work on translating into Arabic. So we'll just finalize that to so some parts that haven't been translated yet. Um, so we'll finalize that version and we'll also make a, a trans French translation um, Khmer and Spanish. And then I've just heard actually that the Somalia office is also translating into Somali. So there will be accompanying versions in those languages. Um, because the documents are each between about 38 and 45 pages, um, we're going to produce some quick guides that would be two, two to three pages long um, that sort of highlight the key questions you need to ask and the process you need to go through to finalize it that you could use in a rapid onset in emergency setting when you know you're going to be doing cash and voucher assistance um, very shortly. We're going to develop an accompanying training package. So in June, we delivered a, a one hour webinar, but um, we'd like to sort of do that in more depth and probably produce a one day training package that people can deliver in country. Um, we will develop guidance on how you analyze the data you've collected. Um, we want to produce a child friendly tool. So at the moment, the tools involve adult respondents. So they're for adults, members of the affected population. But we'd like to develop a set of tools that are um, including participatory activities that would be able to address children. Um, and then a bit further down the line, when we've got the results from all the various country programs who are pilot testing, um, we would like to compile the data and the evidence so that we can be sort of more informed about the risks that really occur when we use cash and voucher assistance because we're very conscious um, that people are hesitant at the moment they don't understand what the risks are they don't understand which mitigation uh, actions are effective and they don't understand so well we don't we don't understand so well um, what the child protection outcomes can be when we use cash and voucher assistance in other sector programs in particular, but also in, in child protection programs. Um, so we'd like to compile the ev evidence we get to date um, so that we can produce a report on that. Um, and that's it. But if anyone has any questions, um, people can type it into the chat box. Uh, do you want me to pan back to you, Eleonora? Did you have other things you wanted to? No, 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 I'll wrap up later. So please now, everyone, if you have any question for Hannah and Ibrahim, now is the time. And in terms of, uh, I should just say, in terms of finalization, um, we will have it a final version by the end of October, but um, it'll go through a design process. So that might take a, so it, it should be available, I would guess in a, in a month or so. Um, the, the final versions of the tools. Um, but otherwise they will appear on the link that Eleonora has shared. So they will appear on the Alliance uh, website as well. Ibrahim, there is a question for you and I can read it out loud for everyone. Can you please explain again, what was the risk in the community involvement you have identified? Yes. So. I meant here, we need to involve community as much as we can in the program designing. Otherwise, maybe we'll exclude like some groups from our cash and program. And also um, involve them and engage them to be familiar with our criteria and our selection or vulnerability criteria to avoid any um, conflict or tension between the ones who receive the cash and the other ones or the other groups. So that's why that's why it's very important to, to engage the community in designing the program from the beginning. So that's what I, I meant. Is it clear? I think so. Thanks, Ibrahim. Richard, how many minutes do we have? I think we have about five minutes left. Um, that's right, yes, about five okay. minutes. Uh, so then we'll be moving on to the main plenary and that will be the, the final closing wrap okay. up. And that is at 10 minutes past the hour with Audrey Bollier and Honey Mansouria. So they've been our facilitators, our leaders uh, all the way through. So it's up to them to, uh, to bring it to the close to wrap everything together. Thanks, Richard. So unless there is um, any other question, I just wanted to tell everyone, well, first of all, thanks for being part of this and for listening to us. 
Um, if you want to hear a bit more on these, like, and also on the task force, on our plans for next year, please do join us in the next um, next week on Thursday 15. If you don't have an invite, please message me or Miret, and we will send you the link to access our webinar for next week, um, where we will like go more into details of the work plan of the task force, what we're planning for the next year. Um, which by the way, for those of you who don't know, this task force will actually stop at the end of this year. Having said that, me, myself and Mirette will continue to kind of work together with the CP Alliance as cash focal points, cash and child protection focal points. So if you want to hear a bit more about that and our plans for next year, please do join us in that. And also we'll have again, Hannah and Ibrahim to present a bit more in details because we'll have two full hours what they've been doing in this pilot. Um, so yeah, I guess we can go back to the plenary if you're finished. Yes, thank you very much. So the plan now is I'm going to end this Zoom and then in Kiko chat, if you can go to the plenary room uh, and for that final wrap up with Audrey and Honey. They'll be wrapping up. I'm going to finish this Zoom now. So please then move, use Kiko chat to go to the main plenary room. Thank you very much, everybody.